As a freight broker, you'll need to accomplish three main tasks to ensure that you are properly set up to conduct business. First is your licensing. You'll need to be granted your operating authority from the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, also known as the FMCSA. Next, you'll need to acquire either a freight broker surety bond or set up a trust fund with a value of at least $75,000. Finally, you'll need to designate your process agents. Now, in this video, we're focusing on that second step only. More specifically, how to get your freight broker surety bond. What's up guys, I'm Nate Cross with Freight360. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through the process of obtaining a freight broker surety bond. Now, this differs slightly from a freight broker trust fund, so we'll cover the differences between the two and how you can check this off of your to-do list when getting set up for your freight brokerage. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button down below and make sure to add the Freight360 podcast to your playlist wherever you listen to great podcasts. So what is a surety bond? A surety bond, similar to bonds in other industries, is a product with a cash face value that will pay out to a specific party in the case of default or some sort of payment or action. Think about bail bonds as a quick example. A judge might set bail for a person at $10,000. This means that they need to post $10,000 as a promise to return to court rather than staying behind bars. Now, if that person shows up to court, they get their money back. And if they don't, they lose the $10,000. If someone doesn't have $10,000 to spare, that's when they're gonna go to a bail bondsman to front the money for them. And they're gonna usually pay a cost of around 10%, or in this case, that's $1,000. For freight brokers, a surety bond has some similarities. If a freight broker opts to use the surety bond rather than the trust fund, the FMCSA will require that broker to get a bond with a face value of at least $75,000. Proof of the freight broker surety bond will be filed with the FMCSA using form BMC84, Brokers or Freight Forwarders Surety Bond. The bond is required to ensure that brokers act ethically and that motor carriers get paid in the event that a broker fails to pay them. Now, this could happen for a variety of reasons. Think about a broker's cash flow having issues. They go out of business, or there's just simply a dispute on a rate with a carrier. Now, since freight brokers usually pay carriers within three to four weeks after their services are performed, a carrier is taking a risk by hauling a load for a broker in hopes that they actually get paid, right? The bond requirement is in place to assure carriers that they will in fact receive payment for their services even if the broker fails to pay them directly. Bonds are technically an insurance product and you'll pay a bond company an annual premium in order to obtain one. The cost will depend on your creditworthiness and typical premiums are around two to 4% of the face value if you're a brand new broker. So that can equate to somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,500 up to $3,000 give or take per year for the $75,000 bond. All right, let's look at the trust fund. So similar to a freight broker surety bond, the trust fund will serve the exact same purpose for your freight brokers. The difference here is how it's actually funded. So I mentioned earlier that a bond is sold as an insurance product, right? You're gonna pay an annual premium from the broker to that insurance company. Now, rather than pay an annual premium every year, you could opt to put your own $75,000 worth of collateral or assets into a trust fund. That $75,000 is then earmarked for the same situations that the bond is. If you don't pay a carrier, the trust will. If you're using a trust fund instead of a bond, you'll fill out a different form. It's form BMC85, and it's called Brokers or Freight Forwarders Trust Fund Agreement. If you plan on being in the business for a long time, the trust fund might be your better option to go with. Think about this. You're eventually gonna pay more money every single year for the bond overall, compared to just putting your own money or assets into a trust. You don't get your bond premiums back, whereas that trust belongs to you forever. You can access the money at any time if you ever decide to shut down your operation. Now, how does the bond actually work? We've covered some situations where the bond would be used. If you don't pay a carrier their full rate for whatever reason, 
that bond is there to pay the carrier what they are rightfully due. Let's look at a pretty straightforward example. Let's say you don't pay a carrier because you don't have the money available. Or perhaps you just you shut down your business, you run out of money. In these cases, the carrier has to file a claim on your bond to get paid. If it's pretty cut and dry that you won't be paying them, the bond company will pay out all the owed money to that carrier. Now, let's say there's a rate dispute. You and the carrier don't agree on some sort of pay terms. Perhaps the carrier claims that you short paid them for whatever because they were owed detention or you deducted money that you didn't agree to. Whatever the case might be, you guys are disagreeing on their settlement. They can still file a claim on your bond in these situations. But in this case, a representative from the bond company is gonna act as an intermediary. Their goal is to settle the dispute between the both of you. Both parties will present their evidence and ultimately the bond company will make a determination. They will determine whether or not that they're gonna pay the claim out as well as how much that carrier could get paid. Keep in mind, bonds are not just free money for brokers that have paid out on their behalf at any time. If your bond pays out a claim, you are responsible to refund them all of that money. The bond option is simply there for brokers to avoid having to front $75,000 in a trust when starting off their business. Now, how do you actually get your bond? Well, this is actually the easiest part. Since all brokers need to meet this requirement and most of them don't have $75,000 to tie up in a trust fund, almost every single new broker will need to purchase a bond. For this exact reason, there are tons and tons of bond companies out there for freight brokers to choose from. Simply go to Google and search freight broker surety bond and you'll find a variety of surety bond companies out there. We recommend that you shop around since the pricing can vary from company to company for the exact same product. So that's the freight broker surety bond in a nutshell. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next week.